say good night. This is the Cutting Edge, and I refer you there with you on next Wednesday. So as we say good night again, you're listening to Kilosai. You know, it apparently there is a brewing coup that is taking place in America. A brewing coup, coup <laughs> against Donald Trump. Somebody, an anonymous person, write a article about certain behavior of Donald Trump and there's a lot of resentment in the White House about his behavior and there are a group of ones even though them claim says so one person write it but apparently there's a group of ones that is trying to figure out the legality <laughs> the legality of Donald Trump's present state of mind as a president and what can be done legally to coup him because that is really what it is all about you know well we're going to see what's happening because they're going to have an election in November they're going to have an election in November so we're going to see what is happening but it's a big thing a very big thing you know, I hear him tweet say, him ball out treason. And they must find out his who. But, you know, in America, different, you can Because a reporter writes something in a paper, you, 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 you hope that the, the owners of the newspaper or the media service tell you his who. So we're going to see what is happening there because it's really something else. This part of it is even more, you know, devastating to Donald Trump than even him, a group woman. Weird. You know, remember Nixon. Remember Nixon and we remember Bill Clinton. Even though Bill Clinton come out like an angel, after he was impeached, he come out like an angel. But as we say, we're going to see what is happening. Meanwhile, over in Africa, we see the president of South Africa. Well, it's a little while him said still, he might declare, say, look here. Donald Trump can't come tell me nothing about land business. Because, you know, there's a, there's a plan of foot to reclaim for all the land that was stolen by these Europeans. They are, they are now deciding that they are going to take back the land in the name of the people. Well, you know, people are ball out, especially Australia are ball out, because Australia say if that take place, they're going to take some of the the people them, the white people them, into Australia. Well, uh, Donald Trump uh, apparently ball out. <laughs> Donald Trump ball out. I would tell you to ball out. The president of America said, look, president of South Africa said, look your man. Who no can tell we nothing about our land, you know, because you no thief the Native American land. On a thief the, Ameri the Native American land. So who is on now for come talk about? We never thief nobody land. Or somebody thief our land from we. And we are reclaim it now. Now run up on the mouth. And if Donald, if him stand up in front of Donald Trump, him say, he would have said the same thing. He would have said the same thing. They might reclaim the land. As we said, all the while, land is the basis of power. If you don't have any land, you don't have any power. These little cubicles where they make, sky rise cubicles where they make to put people in, or people are buying to go in there. It depends on a piece of land. And the land is not owned by you because there are many people living in cubicles on one story high. You only own the little concrete part where you put rug pan and carpet pan. But if that building should come down, the land is still there. Who own the land? Not you. And that is the way to go now. 
cubicles, pan top of cubicles, like Rubik's Cube. People live in them. That's a new way of living. No, not on land, with dirt, where you can't touch dirt now. Because you have to take elevator to come out of your house or walk down the staircase. And even when you walk outside, you still don't see no dirt. So little more, you're going to go into cities where there's no dirt. And there's no trees either. Because even though people is trying to preserve what they call green areas, they are trying to preserve it. But modernization is taking away those green spaces. So soon we will be traveling for miles and miles and miles. And it's be concrete and steel. You have certain cities is like that already. You have certain cities is like that. You know, you want to go to Japan. <laughs> you got Japan to write it. You will want to see a tree. If you will at times, you have to go take the bullet. The bullet is a, is a train. When you're in a train, they come like in a aeroplane, man. Believe you me, when it's a travel from one city to the next, if them call it the bullet, it actually is shaped like a bullet, the front side shaped like a bullet. But it is well up there. So, we remember some little cartoon where they used to show me like the Jetsons. You know, they have the Flintstone and they have the Jetsons. The Flintstone is more prehistoric people. The Jetsons is more futuristic. And when you look upon the Jetsons as a comic, as a cartoon, you realize how ahead these people was with them planning. But we were just looking at it like cartoon. Because the, 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 the manifestation of those cartoons is exactly what is coming to pass now. Where them have flying motor cars. Yes, them have it, flying motor cars. Them developing flying motor cars where for easy congestion on the road. So I want to ask the question because I come through some... I, co, I, have, I have gone on town a while ago. And I must mention it too. I'm going to mention it. Urchina Smith of a Naya Binge drumming and chanting right in front of the music museum. Right as you come along East Street there before you go over to Arbor Street. Yeah, before you go over to Arbor Street, right at the corner by your left. Between, I think that is George's Lane and East Street. Anyway, Right in the heart of that city there. Drumming and chanting today. But the futuristic thing that we talk about is that little more the congestion with dip on the road where I sit today. Coming down, coming down Kingston from up where me live. The congestion where me sit on the road. Not even Christmas time, Mr. see them congestion up on the road, Rasta. So, if so much car up on the road, and so much car up on the wharf, and so much car there in the car auto shop them, what the hell is going to happen? Because we see them all try them best to fix the road, brand the road and all them something there. But that is not enough. May I tell you, it's not going to be enough. So, futuristically... <laughs> I can't do it. I next break you know that say. But why I forgot go the way of flying cars. The problem with it is that if them start off flying cars, why am to when a car crash? <laughs> why am to when a car crash and drop down by the road? I drop it at somebody building. Give no people driving a Jamaica. You can't just imagine you have a flying, flying car go on up there. Woolly pa car go zoom, 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 and one lick the other one, boof, drop a gong. May I tell you? Because, I, I, I mean, you have to have some way to lick a man up there so you get lick alone, you know. Because it's going to be a catastrophic situation when these flying cars decide they're going to meet an accident. You can't just imagine you have all that six car pile up. It now pile up in the sky. It now drop a ground. 
But them going to have it. Make no bones about it. Them going to have these flying cars zooming cross. Meanwhile, them have car on the ground too. What a mix up, mix up and confusion in our earth yeah. Them call it modernization for the future. And them say it's going to benefit humankind. I don't know what kind of benefit that will be. The benefit is that you're living in the age and you have to abide by what is in the age. Just like how we have cell phone now. There's a time when we want to make a phone call and rain a fall. If you don't have a phone in your house, you have a ring down the place and I push your finger in a little hole and a dial. You have to go at the phone booth and stand up in a line and wait till the other man don't talk foolishness by the phone. And you're dead, you try to him say, Bridget, I know you want the line and I say, hey boy. And then, you know, go there, get in at some argument and maybe I'll fix fight too. But those days don't know. Those phone is like, you must have them in your house now as a kind of archival piece. You know, it's like the London telephone booth, them, the red London telephone booth, them. Yeah, they see them in England. Uh, yeah, they see them in England again. Nobody not going to tell. As a matter of fact, you go in a certain airport in a, in a earth, yeah. And you look for a telephone booth to call somebody. And you can't find a telephone booth. And when you find one, it don't use money. <laughs> because cards will take over. Money will be obsolete and it's card. You have countries now where, I wish country them says 45% moneyless. When we say moneyless, we mean like paper money and jingles. You have countries in Europe where it's like 45% moneyless. Them just have card, you just swipe card, them thing I got to just card, 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 card. You are going to have building, there's a funny little thing. Somebody sent me this fun thing with the man in I'm house and everything is moat, you said, and it 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 it, it, it um like I said, light, like off. It, it go by by like, like how you have a fingerprint. You have a vice, vice print, I, I, I can't do it, I say. And you say, light lock off, boom, light lock off. And say, make coffee. Coffee just a, the coffee just a bubble upon the thing. But it, it, it a got to war, it, it a got to your voice. It's like when you program, you program your phone and you put a fingerprint on your phone and nobody else can open your phone but unless they have that fingerprint there. So they would have to cut off your finger for opening your phone. And the man said, make coffee, both of them make coffee, drink the coffee, put on the thing. He said, turn off light. He said, turn off light. He said, turn off television. The television turn off. He said, open door. Door open. When he reached outside, he said, close door. Door close. So he went to the dentist. And the dentist took out his teeth and pushed cotton in there. He said, no, you can't move the cotton teeth. The teeth. He said, so I'm talk. When he went to the door, <laughs> when he went to the door, he said, open the door. The door now open because the door, the door said, we do not recognize those vo that voice. And then I say, oh, no, 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 no. we do not recognize that, that voice. Rain start fall. <laughs> Rain start fall. And the third of the radio, oh, no, oh, no, I can't work because it don't recognize him voice again because the teeth come out and that is not the voice we use for lock the door. Him neighbor just come on to rat and just take the key out, take a, the old time way. The old time way of opening the door is with a key. The neighbor just come and take a key and just open the door. I'm going to fit him house, not, not the man who can identify. The, him look for the neighbor over the other side and open him door with a key. Old time way. So, sometimes modern technology can be an asset but a lot of times it can be very detrimental very detrimental because can you imagine it's like your finger your fingerprint I know them I don't use eye scan now to your fingerprint supposed to make your phone open 
Can you imagine man, if a man chop off your finger, you just make the phone, that phone there is obsolete now. I have to walk around and chop off your finger and press it on it every time you walk with your phone. Well, does well, that reach a man now with feet mouth? Vice command, him can't open the door, him can't, well, him, I mean, he just can't do it because he must go wait till him teeth, him, him, him fix him out. <laughs> it's funny, but it's funny, but it's serious because we're living in that kind of age now. We live in that kind of age where technology take over and the, the cell phone and iPad is the new God. Yes, we thought God was a human being in the sky, but God is in right beside you every day. Because the cell phone transmit and it receive. The cell phone transmit and it receive because it receive calls and it let go calls. It transmit calls and it receive calls. And we think says only that it I receive where you say. But you ever wonder all the message, all the message where in your phone. How it reaches so and how far where did I go for reaches so? Which wire did Kanika and I need the, 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 the sea and which satellite up in the sky I receive all of them things that man can pinpoint where you say that's why Ben Laden and them man never used to use them phone there, you know, because them easily track with the satellite them and them use the the satellite them to track you to a T that you can blow up your place and bomb up everywhere. This is where we they know that most of the things in our house will be digitized. Most of the things them with stove, with fan, air condition, everything will be digitized. And that is where we're going. We can't escape it. All we hear man a bond this and a bond that. It's this way to go because we never know the cell phone. Phone will reach us or no. Phone is not just a phone again. First you used to have called that camera. And you have to snap, snap picture and then reload the frame and make sure it's in a light, not catch a flame. And then you go go develop it and then call you and say, listen, come back the next day and you get the print, 12 picture. Nowadays you take a picture and you don't like it, you just delete that and take the picture again, delete that and take the picture again. And it's cleaner than the Kodak camera. So Kodak camera now can, you can frame Kodak camera and put it up in a glass case now and say, this was... In a those days, and this is, and the whole heap you don't know the name Kodak camera. The whole heap you don't know the name camera, them know says it's, it's, it's a cell phone and take picture. And the cell phone can do everything. Everything. So we reach that stage there. When I tell a man to love it, but you have to embrace it in a certain way because if you don't do that, if you don't understand it, you're going to be left behind. A lot of things where youth are learning at school now going to be null and void 20 years from now. Because them now teach you pity them for the reality of life 20 years from now, 10 years from now. So when a youth left school at 16, almost, almost like, oh, 16, 17, they left school. By the time, by the time, they, by the time my, my little grandson, our granddaughter, which is like seven, eight, left school, which is like ten years from now, and then she have to go fit into a job. By the time she done ten years from now, she left and gone to maybe university, and the next year, them now teach you about things we are gonna be useful to your twenty years from now. So your picture going to be 26. And it's as dumb as when they were seven. Because the technology and what is necessary for teaching you them. Them have the same classroom with the same. Some of the teacher them don't have no sense. No sense the teacher them will have. Because right now me know say all my grandson can use the computer and better than our teacher and teacher them. Our most pick me. And my daughter teach me how to use computer, the first to use email. I mean, never turn back from that. So, we are telling the parents them, you know, 
Don't bother try to bring back what you didn't know, you know, about the good old days, you know. You say the good old days, you see, first time, you know, we didn't have to walk with water upon our head like you want to pick the walk with water upon them head now. None of that. Them the days done. You have pipe in your yard now. Pipe in your, your, your bedroom too. First time you have chimney under your bed. And your peeping under your chimney, you have to wait till morning to go empty it. Now, the toilet, the next door to your bedroom. <laughs> then the day is done. I see some man have born digital music. I say, are you mad? Are you are mad? See this top cell. I want to see this top cell. I mean, I talk about because man have played record now. For go on, like say, well, record is in. Record is in for a group of people. Man, do ever use CD again? Because right now you buy a brand new computer and you don't have CD, the, 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 the tray where you use like record CD pan, you push it on the side of the computer. I will have a new CD you now, do, do, I will have a new computer, don't have that pan it. Don't have that pan it at all. A jump drive. Jump drive, them I use, what them call it. Jump or, or ex external hard drive. So, me remember 8 track tape in a car, in a taxi. I hear Skitter Davis and Pat Boone and Percy Sledge. 8 track tape. They were them, them, them come with the, 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 the big. Me remember 78 record. Tick record, you could have chopped a man with it to write it. 78 record, you play some big nigga upon some gramophone. Now, you go to England in a Camden market, want a gramophone to write it. You have to pay enough money for it. You there South Africa, you see them shine up the gram old gramophone, they want to sell them on the roadside there. You want one, but you have to pay good money for it. Gramophone becomes something of value, even though it's not used as normal. Nobody know a gramophone for go play. The party can only swing with gramophone. First time you have, you're going to a dance hall and the man has string up. You see the man them are come in with beer box, on top of beer box album. 45, like, wow, 12 inch. Nowadays, you, 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 first time you have 70, 70, 78, which nowadays people don't know no name 78. They have 45. And you have 12 inch. And you have album. The album them. When man got to dance, him have with box on top of box of album and box on top of box of 45 are going to dance. And him have him turntable. Them days are one turntable with some tube amplifier. And them I play the music. Music has swing still. But it moved from that. It moved from 8-track to cassette. When cutting edge it just started, yeah, me used to tell man, say, put them cassette pan cock. Put them tape on cock. Cassette like, wow. Why you told him, I one time tell me, say, him buy one car off of my program because when tourists come to them, say, if them have any cutting edge cassette, Cassette done where we know. Man have a record. Man, when we just come a record, turntable did the IRFM. IRFM now no turntable again inside us. So. Some little youth, when I saw big man, them were used to love the record. And some little youth I try a thing. That now nah, come back. You could have talked like more about record, this a record that it's not coming back. Because CD done with you now. Seedless has hardly been played. Because right now, me in front of, me in front of one mixer here, so now, and most people who come inside and I play, I want computer, them have in front of them with a hard drive. You have a whole heap man, see the CD player, two, three CD player in front of me. Man, wherever you put your CD, let them put them hard drive in the CD player and play it. In the hard drive. So why is it is nice, you know, very exotic and rare, you know, we have turntable. Come see a man send me a thing, born digital music. Come here, say, oh, I am mad, you are mad. Just because he might play two turntables, you know, and 
Most old people are playing turntable. Well, if a people in England now and Japan, they want to record them. So they play the record because it is nice. It is something where you say yes, you know. Because right now, if we can't go back to some of the cutting edge cassette, them, and it, 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 it's, it's gem. But we're advanced now. You don't see a man a walk in a dance hall now with crates and crates of 12 inch, crates and crates of album. And sometimes I'm carry the album and I want to tune him and play upon it. One tune, he might play upon the album. And he might have man there and he might carry the whole heap of every box. They might lift up box and put on top of box and everything. No man, you have box with amplifier in it. You have, you have woofer with amplifier in it. So where you say, you know them big box, you know, yeah, you know some little box. I go in that store one time, man, I see one little box with about I was six inch, them say, or eight inch by eight inch, the box. And me, I said, wait, how so much nice that I me not see no box in the store. And them, I show me the, what them call them, BOSS bus, the bus box, them. The man, them make the box in such a way that it's unbelievable. Now you have Bluetooth box, Bluetooth speaker, where you just Bluetooth it with your phone, and you have you no card, no connect, nothing out there, so no connect. Just like when you have a headphone, you no connect to nothing. The man them just have the thing away now. So when I say these things for me, I say these things for because we live in at this time, you know. We have to face the reality there. We are living at this time, yeah. And we must know how to make wood fire. Everybody should have known how to make wood fire. Everybody should have known how to make a coal, make, take coal and make coal stove, make, make cook pan coal stove. Everybody must know how to use a gas stove. Everybody must know how to use an electric stove. I just saw. Because if, if you can't afford your electric bill, your electric stove go like half. And you might have a gas stove to back it up, but then the gas can done too. And then you might have some coal stove around about the coal, you know, no coal, but always have wood. So you go chop two trees and get some dry tree and go make wood. Well, if a people can't make a wood fire for cook pan. Can't make a wood fire for cook pan. And some people just claim, say, them now nah use no electric stove because the food not taste the same. We are mad, they are mad. And you are cook the food. And you will put in the pot, make the food taste good. Some people love smell, <laughs> use, 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 like lagoon and cook. And they smell the lag like your jerk chicken or jerk pork and them something there. Them love taste the, the, the smoke. But guess what now? We're living in a modern times. And when I tell you, if you're going to use nothing, where we destroy your, 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 your health and your thing. And no one can decide where you have to use or where you want to use. But you must be able to use all of the things, them, including the modern things, them, because guess what? Little more, you're not going to see no tree. You're going to live in a city and you're going to live in an area where no tree is not there. So you can't go build up no wood fire. And you have people who are living in a place now where past skyscraper building there where you can't build up wood fire, you can't go chop down to your furniture and build up wood fire in the house. I'm mad you that mad. But you must know how to do it. That is the way of the warrior. The way of the warrior is to know all the, the different sides and perspectives to keep him surviving. That is the way of the warrior. And when you have children, when you have children who don't even know if you catch a fire without turning on the electric stove and or the, the, the gas stove, and when you have old people who, I tell you, say, when them did small, them never, did have, them never have no gas stove. And them have just told me that them out and attack damn food about when them is small. When you this small, you're not small again. You have to understand, say, your life not going to reverse. 
The only thing might reverse is you being a child again. Where you can't help yourself and somebody have to help you. So them say, once a man, twice a child. But you have to know that if your youth come to you with a computer and say, grandfather or grandmother, let me show you how to send an email to your brother where they are in England. And you're going to tell him, say, no, nah, I can't write the letter. Write which letter? Post office is going to become obsolete. Post office is going to become obsolete. You're not going to have no post office again. Is email. Or you're going to WhatsApp. And then further down the line, them could have make absolute email and whatsapp obsolete and find something else and you have to do it or you will never hear from your son or your grandson in a England or in a Japan or in a France or whatever them there and your, your grandpick they might not be around all the while to help you and oh what is beautiful for no say you're there you're there in Africa you can call whatsapp free you don't have to pay nothing and you talk as long as you want and you can send message by the same WhatsApp. And you keep in communication. Like if you are driving late at night on the highway. And your car broke down. You can just take out your cell phone and just call your house and say, Watch out. Car broke down, you know. I don't reach home till whatsoever, whatsoever. Or you call the, the, the car people then for come, come help you patch your tire thing. Because you know what happens when people stop on the highway and can't fix and care and whosoever you don't know who's coming. So we can't to knock it like say we are idiot. We can't to knock it. You know see it? We just have said that because we understand the dilemma we reach we. Especially when you reach a certain age. And you have when we say reach a certain age you now like teenage people who feel say the world is all modern and thing. And if the gas done, they might complain about them want to go to Kentucky and them want to go to Burger King and them something there. And don't know, say, them can go to the back of the yard and catch up some fire and put the pot on the fire and cook the food said way. And electricity gone and them can't do it. And then they have the other set of people now who is the grandparents and sometimes the mother. Who I tell the picnic about, lad, this and that, and when me the little, when you the little, you're not going to go back little again. The good old days not going to come back again. And who tells you the good old days was really good? Because you was complaining in the good old days. Who was complaining in the good old days? Why are you talking about the good old days, the good old days? The good old days, the good old days, the good old days, you know. When me do something bad, and the, the, the woman from next door says me to do something bad, and she beat me. And when my father, when my mother come home, and the woman tell her, my mother beat me again. And then father come home, and my mother tell, tell my, my father, my father beat me again. That is abuse. That is abuse. That is abuse. And you go to school. And the teacher beat you. I mean, touch your toes and take your blows. Mr. Hart from West School used to tell me that. Touch your toes and take your blows. And him have one key and him have one strap him called the snake. One leather strap him called the snake. When him lick you with that rat in over your back, you see, man. May I tell you, your begs like why you think so that make me feel like say, I could have do more work or get the thing right. I truly don't know what I'm thinking of my heart. And in the name is Saato. The thing with it is that the good old days is not as good as all you hear all the old people attack. And the same thing where they sit down on them for and I wonder how oh, come they can't pay this, how oh, come they can't pay that and all them something. That's the good old rich days. If the good old days is so good, we are going there, so no, we wouldn't have gone. Because it's not the generation now create the world and create gun and create bombs and this and that for blow people and poisoning of food and all them something there. 
And now the youth them are trained now to kill one another. Because you the man them are talking about now, say, the, 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 the American them, I get the American diplomat them. Because we think say, that they done in a Cuba. We think say, they done, but it come up again. Them say, the, the, the American diplomat them in, in, in Cuba and China, them using what them call microwave to disorient them and cause them to get sick. And that is a theory where them carry, where the American them carry around about this microwave um, thing where them say the Cuba and them and the Chinese them are due to them diplomats. And them are worse than that. Them have things we are going up in the area so no way. It's unbelievable. Them are look through all wall. Sometimes tell a man that first time say, you know, say you have things you can look through wall. People are say, where you get them madness from? But it's true. It's true. This is the cutting edge and RFM. This is the cutting edge and RFM. And I never yet play out your only pan this radio station yeah. And it's only me play it. <laughs> All right. Why listen to this? Listen. Fifteen things poor people do that the rich don't. Number one, poor people watch a lot of TV. Let me put it this way. If you have the time to watch reality TV, you're probably poor. It's always amazing how much time poor people waste on meaningless television. It's one of those distractions that grabs you and doesn't let go. If you know which celebrity is dating who, and if you're watching TV shows every week as the episodes come on, if you have a favorite news channel, you're probably watching too much television. Hence why your life is the way it is. Let us explain. Celebrity gossip and buzz offers no value to your life. It only serves the celebrities. Rich people aim to be on TV instead of watching it. You might say, but Alux, I'm watching The Big Bang Theory, which is a really funny show, and it helps me disconnect. That's exactly the issue. You disconnect from your problems instead of dealing with them and getting them out of the way. There are rare occasions where, in the words of John Lennon, time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. But really think about it. Should sitting inside watching a screen be something you really enjoy doing? Before we move forward to the second thing poor people do, let me explain what we meant by having a favorite news channel. You might say that the only good reason to watch TV is to be aware of what's happening in the world, staying informed. The problem we're seeing with this is that TV stations are always biased in order to fit their own agenda. Instead, use the power of the internet to get a quick glimpse of what the world is like today and move on to do your own thing. Number two, poor people eat fast food. Health is really important, and many poor people have no interest in knowing what's in their food, what an actual healthy meal should look like, or barely know anything about nutrition. Poor people are blasting their brains with large quantities of sugar and fats with no nutritional value. They are actively ruining their bodies, and as an effect, they cannot perform at 100% of their potential. If you're not healthy, all aspects of your life are directly affected. You'll suffer physically, mentally, professionally, and even romantically. Number three, poor people buy clothes or products that are on sale. Let me put it this way. The only thing you should buy on sale are stocks. While poor people are looking to conserve or stretch the little that they have, the rich are focused on increasing their incomes. Just think about it. The clothes that end up being on sale are the ones that people who could afford to pay the full price didn't want. By buying clothes on sale, you're just making sure that you're looking exactly like someone who can't afford to pay the full price. Number four, poor people wake up later than rich people do in their early years. Poor people are often lazier than the rich in the early days. We know that some of you will be bothered a lot by the previous statement, but statistically, it's the truth. Someone who used their youth to grow themselves is a lot less likely to remain poor later on in life. Instead, if you wake up late, don't educate yourself. Waste time on meaningless activities. At one point, you'll find yourself so far behind what the world needs from you that you'll end up miserable. The paradox is that people who do not focus on growth in the early days end up working a lot harder with little success rate later in life just to stay afloat. We've done an entire series on inspiring people on our channel and almost all of them, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett and more, wake up early. You can check the series out in the top right corner. Number five, poor people are really into sports. 
The truth is, unless you're a professional athlete or an owner of one of the teams, there's really no reason for you to watch sports. It's the same with television. It's escapism from your current reality. Think of it like this. You're putting yourself in a position where you as an individual have no impact on the outcome of the game. Zero impact. This behavior then sticks with you and you end up being a spectator in life instead of being a player or an owner. And that's when you start criticizing other people when you yourself haven't done anything better. Number six, poor people don't shower as often as rich people do. Initially, we thought this was just a made up fact, but it turns out to be true. And amazingly, it explains a lot when you really think about it. Most of the jobs today are in the service industries, where human contact is a must in order to have a successful exchange of value. People who don't have good personal hygiene will, in time, be less successful than their counterparts. People tend to trust them less. People want to spend less time in their presence. And all of this has ramifications in their personal life. If people don't like you and don't want to be around you, what kind of partners will you attract? Exactly. It might seem ridiculous, but the first step to success should be an early morning shower. Number seven, poor people blame others for their misfortunes. How many people do you know that have some sort of excuse or blame other factors for not being successful yet? There are some things that are out of our control, but 99% of your life is on you. Remember that you are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your relationships. You are in charge of your health. You want these to change? Do something about it. Life is not what happens to us. It's how we react to what happens to us. When something bad happens, the poor choose to victimize themselves. While the rich look into it, study it. They seek to find out what happened, why it happened, and how they can protect from it in the future. While one assumes the position of vulnerable victim, the other uses it as a growing point. Number eight, poor people have no money saved. One of the differences between poor people and the rich is that the former don't get ready for what's next. Having money put aside allows for growth. Let's say something bad happens. If you have money put aside, the problem is solved and you can resume your life. If you don't and the situation is urgent, what do you do? You either liquidate an asset like your car, house, etc., or you can take out a loan. For the rich, when the situation is over, they're left in the same position minus the savings, while for someone who's poor, their lifestyle has been dramatically hit or now belongs to the creditor. Now, let's look at the exact opposite. An opportunity arises. Those who have money put aside now have the chance to expand their lives while the other can't afford to take full advantage of this opportunity. That's why the rich are growing richer while the poor are getting poorer. Number nine, poor people use credit cards or take out loans for useless things. One of the main differences between rich and poor is how they make use of credit. The rule is simple. If you take out a loan to buy something that doesn't generate more money than the loan, don't take it. It's that simple. You should only use credit if what you'll be using it for is an investment. Want to take out a loan for a large TV? Don't. Want a loan to buy that new Supreme gear? Don't. Want to use credit cards to get the new iPhone? Don't. Unless you're flipping the Supreme gear for profit or you're using your iPhone to develop a new app to grow your business, these items should not be on your credit. Instead, earn the money and then spend it. You'll learn more about this on number 12. Number 10, poor people tend to have more kids and earlier in life. The truth is, kids are really, really expensive. We all know how fun it is to make them, or at least practice making them. But people get stuck up to this point. They don't think it's true. Just to give you a sense of perspective, if you're living in one of the more developed countries, raising a child will cost you approximately $250,000. Because of a lack of education, bad environment, and other factors, poor people have, on average, more children and at a younger age than their rich counterparts. While the rich wait a couple of years until their standards of living improve in order to assure the right environment and prime conditions for their child to flourish, the poor just go ahead with it. Once the baby comes, the struggling begins. Just so they can stay afloat and progress beyond barely surviving is almost impossible to achieve. Number 11. Poor people do not do regular checks with their doctors. We've touched on the importance of health in the past, but this is an especially important point. Poor people do not get themselves checked regularly. Let's say by mere chance you end up having a difficult disease, let's say cancer. If you do regular checkups, you'll discover it in early stages, making the treatment possible at a lower cost. If on the other hand you neglect to do so, you might discover it only when it's too late. It will cost both you and your entire family a fortune, and no matter how much money you have, you might still lose your life. Number 12. Poor people spend money before they get it. 
One of the biggest dangers in life is spending money before you have it. The second you start borrowing money or acquiring expenses before you're able to pay them, your life starts to spiral down. If you don't have money for something that you're willing to part with without affecting your life, then you can't afford it. Go back to work and then get it. Number 13. Poor people surround themselves with other poor people. True Aluxers know that you are the sum of the five people you hang out with most. If you're surrounded by four poor people, guess who's the fifth? One of the ways people make sure they stay poor is by affiliating themselves or hanging out with other poor people that reinforce their poor beliefs. You need people around you that will inspire you and push you further, that are doing incredible things themselves, whose success will only motivate you to exceed your current reality. If you're hanging out with the same people you did when you were young, you might want to double check. Don't be afraid to step away from a crowd and move on to something better. If you don't, your potential will probably be crushed by those who want to feel better about their miserable lives by making sure you suffer the same fate. Number 14. Poor people never follow through on their ideas or potential. You're not able to control who your parents are, where you were born, or the way society treats you. The only thing you can control is the amount of hours you put into your dream. Every single person alive only has 24 hours per day, and yet some do a lot more than others. If you dedicate yourself to learning and implementing more about what you're passionate about, it's only a matter of time until you reach success. You've heard that 9 out of 10 businesses fail in their first 3 years. Well, do you know how many businesses fail because they never got started? The answer is all of them. If you have an idea, work on it. Put it out. Get feedback. Improve it. Launch again and again and again. It took us three years of writing thousands of articles on ALUX.com before we decided to take the jump and make videos here on YouTube. Number 15. Poor people believe that others should help them reach the top. The world doesn't owe you anything. Nobody does. Believe it or not, you're in this by yourself. You are in charge of what happens in your life. The thing is, everyone believes when they're young that they're going to be successful. But then reality happens. This world we're living in rewards only the best of the best. Those that never quit. Those that keep learning. Keep adapting and understand that nobody will solve their problems for them. Face them head on and along the way. Ari of the same way. Thought and might provoking. Share parts of the journey Always you. smoking. Otherwise, you'll just be a part of Lyrics the Lyrics like a bazooka. We know you are listening to Muta Baruka. Maybe this video will help you in your journey. Yeah, this is the cutting edge. We're going to take you to Senegal. You know, it's a weird thing because Senegal embraced the Latin beat. It's a French, it's a past French colony. But it embraced the Latin beat. I don't know how the Latin beat reached down there or if it's them make the Latin beat reach up here. Yeah, but it's amazing. So this is Senegalese music. What is happening? Not well, go on. The person I hear me. Yeah. Hey, greetings, Muta. How are you? Uh, it's so hard to find, man. You know, let me try to get to the phone. Area now. Area now. Who does me talk to? And I've been waiting. <laughs> no, but nobody ever give me no number. Really? No, sir. I'm a card boy. I, 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 I uh, uh, where's well, the person who set it up for me said they gave you a um, producer. The, the producer number. The producer not here and it's long time. I don't see her. Oh, dear. <laughs> Look here. I was calling anyway, Bonnie from, <laughs> from a left Kingston till now I call Bonnie. Uh-oh. Just forget the number. Anyway, we, we, we reach that stage just still. Yeah, man. Good thanks. So, you know. I'm good, you know. I hear you mash up downtown, you know, No, I build it up. I never mash it down. I build it up. <laughs> I, I, I hear that you know what's coming and you never come neither. No, I couldn't reach. I couldn't reach, Muta. So, you know, we're so trying to get this thing together, so. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I heard it was really good. So, no, I'll, you, I'll man, try and reach one of the songs. Wonderful, man. Wonderful, <laughs> man. Beyond expectations. <laughs> yes. All right. And so, great expectations. All right. So the eleventh of September. Uh huh. Twelve tribe headquarters. The celebration come around again. Tell me exactly what why take place there. Because you have oh. a different thing happening. Four sisters are gonna play music. Yeah, man. Five five sister selectors. Five. Okay. It's really going to be interesting. It's a taste of Africa part two. We had one couple of years ago. And uh, now, as you know, it's Ethiopian, the first day of Ethiopian New Year yeah. in Kotakash. Yeah. So we wanted to have that theme, you know, of African food. Mm. And um, we wanted something different. Mm. So we 
um, put together a combination of, you know, diverse sisters yes, yes. who are just going to really make the place nice, you know. And um, Sister Carol, I've so, I hope people don't know that Sister Carol are big selector, you know. <laughs> where is that now? Yeah. <laughs> she surprised even me. Oh, you never <laughs> know. I didn't know. I didn't know where she, she did say that from, you know, she was a youth. Yeah, man. Um, she, she been doing that, you know, but um, she's ready to bring out her own um, sound yeah. system now, too. So, yes. you know, yes. we're really looking forward to that because oh, she's going to do and select, you know. I can get that job so, on that sound system there. Right? <laughs> I Paul, um, Cinder Black I Paul, is this? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, man. So tell me the name of the sister, them know who I'm profiling, or how them. Okay. How them claim we them. have um sister, we're going to start off with Isaac Sankofa. I'm sure you know her. Oh, yeah, from yeah, the yeah, that, um, from Stone Shows. And she plays a really lovely mix of, um, eclectic you know, songs, aren't they? Yeah, man, an eclectic mix of, of with, with, yeah, um, I play uh, Nigerian life music I, and Afro, um, Afro Cuban beat. rhythms and yeah. you know. I play the dance so function uh, at Stone Show. Yes, there. yes, there, that's yeah. right. And then we have um, Woody Empress, who's an up and coming DJ. That um, she's almost a fixture now at um, Dub Club, you know. And she's she's young and she's energetic. So we're, we're looking forward to that as well. What does that then mean? there's um there's DJ Marshmallow, who you know is the vinyl. She's, no, what what is the name of the sister? What is the name of the sister? Men, no, what is the name of the sister you mentioned up to the dub club? Uh, Wave Empress. Okay. okay. Wave Empress, yes. Um uh then we have um as I was saying, Sister DJ Marshmallow. She's she's into her vinyl, right. you know, the sweet sound of vinyl. Okay. And we have Yumi Hypo, who I'm sure you know. They From all, Port all Port um, adopted Japanese. From over Portmore. <laughs> um, the, yeah, man, she's, she's full of energy. She's the panel radio and, over there, don't it? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's, um, she's a DJ on radio. And she, she actually started out as a mobile sound, which I didn't know. Mm, mm. Yes. And, and and has graduated so yeah. yeah and then of course we're going to top it off with Sister Carol so well, you know, you know I know I'll probably the list I've heard play, well not two but that I know play music it's two of them I know the um yes. Sister Sankofa and um and Carol Sister and Carol, Carol. And well, other, time, the other, well, I'm time. sure you love to hear them as the well the radio station over Portmore I think the sister play upon it the, the, the one we mentioned the Japanese one you know me yeah she's on um, yeah the station yeah is yeah, yeah. Yes. I think I hear her one uh-huh. time upon it too yes yes alright so what so, time it start sorry what time it start it starts at 7 and we need people to understand say if them that day is 5 5 DJs and we, it's a night, it's a weeknight, so we have to finish at 12. Okay. So, the one that come with the 10 o'clock business, and you're going to miss some of them. Yeah. Right? What time you start? So, we start at 7, we start serving the dinner at 7. So, each, right? each, 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 um, DJ will play all long? For an hour. Okay. For an hour. So but, you know, hour. depending on the vibe, they might decide to play together too, and go over. So, you know, it, you know how we flex. Yeah. It depends on how the band is going. Yeah. But each of them will definitely play for an hour. Okay, okay. Yes. That's on board. That's and on of board. course, you know, the most important part, um, Muta, is that these proceeds are for the education. Eh? It's for the JRDC school yeah, in Shashamani. Yeah, yeah, I know. Once again, the, the students bought up the place, 100% classes. Wow. And they now need um, some science equipment where we're going to try and help them with. Oh. And we've also established the Valagad um, Scholarship Fund here in Jamaica. Okay. So we want to try and build up that so we can help students, you know, who, bright students who, who need some support. Oh, yes. So, you know, it's for education. So it's $2,500 pre-sold. Mm. They can get their pre-sold tickets at 801 to 83 Hope Road. Um, Daily from six to ten p.m. and um, it's twenty eight hundred at the gate. All right, so let me ask you a question now. Mm-hmm. That include the food. Yeah, man. All right, suppose you blow yeah, around the food. 
If you don't, well, if you don't want the food. Yeah, how much you pay? Well, um, once we've sold, we, we, we're looking at an option for people who don't want food for a thousand dollars to come in and just enjoy the dance, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, they, they buy the refreshments. Yeah, because that's very important. Yeah. If you don't yeah. want the food. Yeah, man. All right. So, <laughs> so we're looking forward to coming, right? Uh, of course, I, I tell you. Oh. I tell you, oh. I come in. Like, oh. <laughs> so I know you come enjoy it. You know, it. We really want the people to come out and support the no, sisters, may I come especially, on, may I come. you know. Yeah, ma'am, I come on. I may bring others with me too. Right, right, right. Well, we give thanks so for that. So, the people, them again. Remind them of the date. This is Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday, 11. September 11th. Yes. Starting at 7 p.m. Yes. And it's 81 to 83 Hope Road. The entrance is on Cleveland Avenue. Yes. All right, ma'am. Right? Yeah, Gates open at 6. Yeah. So, be there at 7. Start eat your food, feel nice, and... Tell me, so the menu, tell me the menu. Tell me the menu. We are going with the menu. Tell menu we have North African. Well, we have um, vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. North African falafels. We have um, injera. That's Ethiopian and the lentil water. Eh? You going to falafel up there? Yeah, man. We got falafel and, yeah. and hummus and tabule and <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. yes. And um, shakalaka from South Africa, um, which is a vegetarian dish. Yeah. And um, we have um, corn stew, the Jamaican corn you stew. That's the spice you can turn that there. on. So, you know, yeah. in Jira, what then? Yeah, man, we have in Jira, what? We have in Jira mm-hmm. and lentil, what? Oh, so, oh, lentil, what you have? Okay. Yes, yes. There's no pepper. And, Enough pepper, very, very. <laughs> right. And then we're going to have some Jamaican favorites, you know, the usual. Okay. Okay. So All it right. will be really, really an interesting um, night. Good yeah. food and good company. We'll and definitely good music. Come. We'll definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right. And a good cause. Yeah, man. Keep down. Keep down. Yeah, man. All right. So you hear it? Tribe, tribe of Israel celebrating New Year's Eve. New Year's Day, sorry. Ethiopian style. And three select five selectors, five female selectors going to carry up on the levels. I tell you, <laughs> yeah, all right. She don't even know why I try to have to do because the food part, why you not eat the food because I come me, I come for you, the five selectors, them. You know, they hear that? I want you, the five selectors, them. So, yeah, man, this is the cutting edge. It's terrible, you know, about just where math came from. You know, all of the pictures that they've shown out of Africa, they've never really educated the Americans, white or black, about what really goes on in Africa, what some of the cities are really like. And that we're not running around over there with Tarzan, you know, and when they show anything from Africa, even down to today, they pick the worst scenes, the most terrible situations, you know, and uh, they show those, but uh, we have a proud history. But of course, what we did in Egypt 5,000 years ago, or what we did in China 35,000 years ago, is of no benefit if we don't understand what to do today and how that would help us to survive. And we discovered the clock. We did discover the wheel. We were, black man has never been a caveman. You've never been in a cave. There's no history of it. You've never been in a cave. Uh, we discovered mathematics and uh, the alphabet and writing and all of those great things that they have built a foundation on that they came and got and took back to other countries. We don't know what Africa would be like without the white influence. We don't know what it would be like without the Rockefellers and De Beers and all of them. We don't know what Africa would have been like. We do know that there were greater places in Africa other than Egypt, which is the only one they let us know about. Concurrently and simultaneously during the Pyramid Age, there were great things happening in West Africa. But we very seldom. There are nations known as Dartichet. Dartichet is now, would geographically presently be located where Ghana is. We have the Nak culture, which is where we today would call Nigeria. We have the Munumatapan Empire in what today we call Zimbabwe. There, there are over 300 stone structures in Southern Africa. And then you have that great structure in, in the great Zimbabwe that shows a direct relationship to the Grand Lodge of Luxor in Egypt. You have Puani, which is in today's Somalia. 
Ethiopia. You have the, the Kush empires that are simultaneously happening. When Hatshepsut, the great Pharaoh king, although she was a woman, she was a Pharaoh king, sitting on the throne of Kemet, her cousin sits on the throne of Tuanit, or what we call Somalia. There are great things happening historically across the African continent. You have the kingdoms of Cuba and Luba in Central Africa. Mansa Musa was the king of Mali in the, the 1300s, very wealthy brother. During the dark age of Europe, Europe was going through a dark age, Africa was thriving. It was the gold capital. Mansa Musa was considered the wealthiest man on the planet at the time. Mansa Musa had a very well-known pilgrimage to Mecca where he went to, to Egypt and went to Mecca and went through Egypt and he gave out so much gold it threw off the Egyptian economy. In today's terms, Mansa Musa gave away what would be the equivalent of a hundred million dollars in gold. The African was the first race to circumnavigate the entire globe. All over Africa, all over the world, the peoples of color that they call Africans, Alphabolanians, who are all over the world. So to say that in, 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 Ghana, the, in Ghana, they had the Ashanti, uh, they had, I mean, all over, we had powerful uh, uh, dynasties, uh, so innumerable we couldn't even name them. Because remember, we had hundreds of thousands of years, and that's the secret. They cut us off at 6,000 because anything beyond that they could say is mystery, they could say is myth. So when you control the information, which is essentially what they've learned to do, under the Vatican they have about six to eight miles of storage space that have all of our artifacts and uh, the Virgin Mother being black, all of the faces. We have to take apart the layers that are actually uh, constructed in the lie. They're layered. For instance, you have a discipline in academia called Egyptology. Now, what is Egyptology? They say, well, it's the study of Egypt. Well, no, it's not the study of Egypt. Egyptology was created by the Vatican in order to make sure that there was a screening mechanism in place to explain away the truth that was being excavated every year that kept giving them proof of who the ancient Kemites were. So Egyptology and Egyptologists are essentially agents of disinformation. Where else do you see a society, a people, and a way of life actually become a science? Unless you have specific purposes to make sure that the information that you are gathering on those people are given the proper perspectives to maintain the lie. So you don't get an Americology, you don't get Europology, you don't get Russiaology. Richard Fry, right? When he had his special back in 1977, there's a scene. They only allowed him to do five shows. In fact, they were rather ignorant because it took them five shows to realize what the brothers were really doing. Richard Pryor, there's a scene where he goes in uh, to the pyramids and he is carrying the bags of the archaeologists and the anthropologists who are of European descent. And they're talking amongst themselves about what this find is and its importance, the greatness of it. And Richard Pryor is in the, this temple uh, looking all around and he begins to say, but all these people are black. He said, look at that guy over there, that guy looks like my uncle. And he's just, you know, I mean, it's humorous. But what Richard Pryor is actually talking about is that, you know, these are black people in these pyramids, and these are the people that built these pyramids. He said, wait a minute, these people... And then all of a sudden, the, the camera begins to show the anthropologists of European descent, and they start to nudge each other because they realize, hey, you know, the guy carrying the back is, is looking around and he's learning some things in here. So very quietly, you see them backing out of the pyramid. Right? And Richard Pryor is still there talking about how great the pyramid is. And then all of a sudden, you, they show you the door close and all of a sudden the scene goes black. Which means that was the blackout on the information for black folk to understand their history. This is what Richard Pryor was dropping on us in 1977. This is what actually has happened. Richard was telling us, this is what has happened to us. Because as, as you become conscious and brother becomes conscious and as community we become conscious, the Europeans who know this are beginning to realize. So they're trying to shut the door on us.
So the narrative of black people in the United States was, you know, you came from these primitive, savage people who had no history, and everything you are, we hate you. Strip the African of his knowledge of himself. You can then replace that knowledge with any falsification of consciousness you desire. Once you take from me my knowledge of myself, you can then tell me those lies. To get someone to actually think that someone else is inferior, you have to raise that type of mentality to a religious level. Remember, when they attacked Africa, they did not attack Africa physically. They did not attack Africa educationally. They attacked Africa spiritually. Jomo Kenyatta said when the European first came to Africa, the Africans had the land and the white man had the Bible. White man told him to close his eyes, get on his knees and pray. Jomo said when the black man opened his eyes, the white man had the land and the black man had the Bible. It's just been awful how they've did us in religion. And our people tend to think that even those who feel that they know that white Americans have mistreated us, their grandchildren or great-grandchildren still mistreating us in a lot of ways. They still believe where, but nobody would lie about God. When that's not true. People who are trying to subjugate another people and turn them into slaves, not just physically, but mentally, then uh, they certainly would try to uh, teach them that God looks like me. We thought the only God we had was the one that white people gave us, which was Jesus, okay? And he looked like them. And uh, when we saw them, psychologically, we were transferred that that was deity. If it really was unimportant, what he looked like, then why didn't he look like some of the other, the majority of the people on earth? Why would he look like the people who are the minority race on the entire earth? We're not the minority. People always ask me, why do the black church not get rid of the white Jesus and put a blue black Jesus in place with a nappy head? Because black people would stop coming. In fact, today, if you were to go to Africa and talk to the children who've been Christianized, they will tell you that their ancestors covenanted with devils. And this is why black people are in the condition they are today. So come turn to Christianity and of course you turn to the to the to the oppressor's religion and then you, you eat the gruel that they give you and at the bottom it says Jesus saved you. Of course, you're conditioning that person for another thousand years. Christ. When you talk about the image of Christ, it is important that we no longer uh, ascribe to the European image of Christ. Why? Because the brain is a associating organism. It stores everything as pictures. And because it is associating, if you force feed an African child that Christ is white, because the brain associates, as that child begins to grow, the brain will associate white Christ with white people. And so if white Jesus is God, then white people must also be the gods of humanity. And so guess what? The power in the painting is transferred to the people who resemble that painting. And so it is difficult to pray to a white Jesus and not in some way feel inferior to white people. And that's why when I talk to Christian ministers, I often tell them, you have to change these pictures. They say it don't matter. Of course it matters. Why do you think the European went around the world and systematically altered the image of Christ in every major cathedral, every major church, every corner of the globe? Because it is difficult to oppress a people whose image of the God doesn't look like the oppressor. But when God and the oppressor look one in the same, then the people will come to believe that the oppression was ordained about eclectic man the only program you can read in Jamaica you go and go hear African music jump from over there to from Latin style jump over there so to African what do reggae and jump from over here to now do serious rock steady by Jackie Mito yeah 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 oh, oh gosh man what do you man Yes, man, you're your favorite musician, the genius Jackie Me Too. I tell you, man. Twin spin at that. I tell you, man, the evening, the evening time album. Yes, yes. So yeah, man, it. Jackie Me Too, man, the man, man, the in second album, you know, first one at studio one there from the picture of Trafalgar Square with Ram Jam and thing, and then this one at evening time with... One step beyond and them tune there. Tough, tough, tough. Steady artist, greatest. Big artist, man. Big artist. Yeah, 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 man. My favorite musician, the genius who create the organ shuffle where they describe reggae with, you know, Baby Y and Nanny Goat and let them say Baba and they and 
Good. I tell you, man, it's a joy. Joy to hear them just me too, you know. And you know a thing where I notice a lot of dances for years now. Them not really play instrumentals again, you know. You know what is? But them are, are it's on go it's on go sly and rabbit still I make instrumental though, you know. At least I can't do me a year still. Yeah, 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 no, it's, it's true. Mm. So, but what you know why is because I find a lot of dances for years now. In first time dances are in the sixties, seventies, you'd have instrumentals playing at the dance and thing, but you know have much instrumentals. No, I don't know, think computer can do bridge. I don't think computer can go to the bridge, though. You know, you know the bridge, you know the music when they you know, bridge. Yes, yes, that is true still, but even with computer, you can still have instrumental still. It's just like, you know, just the vocal thing, all in this kind of thing. But me, a man, but you know, love my instrumental and them thing there. Yeah. And... Talking about instrumental and things, we have to heal up the wire Linda. Because Tuesday the fourth, we had it one year since that great the, keyboard is Earl Wire Lindo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, one year. Yeah. So we are going to England, eh? We are going to England. We are going to England. <laughs> is that the mayor of London? Come under a lot of pressure. Sadi Khan, who is a you know, the Muslim, the Muslim man, um, the Muslim man. Because what has happened, he has delivered, he promised a lot and has not been able to deliver the command to building houses. And I'm not talking affordable houses, but houses to people and for, for council housing, you know, for. For the majority of people who need council homes, because they, they have a, a next thing to where them call so called affordable housing. But when you take a stop, the prices that they're charging for affordable housing, most people can't afford that. And an even worse situation where a lot of our people, as African people, depended on council housing, which is local government building houses. Yeah. Those houses not being replaced since the time of Margaret Thatcher when she sold off the council housing and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And Tony Blair and others continued with that policy. There has been a severe shortage whereby a lot of people of them 40s, 50s, and less than that are not able to get on the housing ladder and have any housing place. A lot of people have to be living with their parents. Mm. Yes, very, very serious situation. And then the situation of violence, whereby a lot of it has not been able to stem give up violence that has engulfed London. And yeah. not just London, too, but. The, the stabbing of big. The whole stabbing, 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 stabbing. Yes, the stabbing, as a matter of fact, um, just. There was on Panorama and BBC the recent case of a 17-year-old by the name of Raheem, I think, mm. who was Barton, whose parents originally from St. John's Road, Spanish Town, yeah. who, was, who was stabbed and killed recently. Yeah. You know, as, an, as another example. So them, them arrest the brother, them, them, them arrest the stabber, them arrest the stab, stabber. Yeah, you hear me? No. Yeah, yeah. go on. Go on ask ahead. if them arrest the stabber, if them find him, if them catch him. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not doing. They have, they have, they have, they have, they have held, um, people, I, 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 I believe. But the, the, the thing is that so many people from our community, too. I mean, you have other than our African community, but you know, but victims are, are stabbed. And there is a police commissioner from our community, not commissioner, but he was a superintendent in the London Police Metropolitan by the name of Leroy Logan. And he has come out and denounced Sadiq and the mayor for saying that as an advisor he used to tell him 
that the approach is that the police has to build trust with our community. Mm. But Sadi Khan is not interested in building trust with our community. In, in, in using the police as a enforcement rather than trying to build trust with the com community. He's saying, with, and he's right, and other people know that too, that you cannot solve the situation and get the cooperation of the African community by, by, by using the police as force. You have to have some good relationship with our community, mm. you know? But this guy said he can't know a lot of our people voted for, as opposed to the conservative candidate. If someone done nothing, the African community, mm. You know, nothing, no, no, nothing positive, and, and and it just goes to show that the problem that we as African people have, it's not just with the Europeans and the English them in this country, but you have other races too, who them have that same racist disregard for African people. Mm. See, and and this and this has come over with this guy Sadiq Khan also, for example. In quick to attack Jeremy Corbyn, you know, these lies that them spreading about Jeremy Corbyn is so-called anti-Semitic, which is nonsense anyhow, because the Arabs and other people are also Semites. It is really anti-Jewish. But Jeremy Corbyn is not anti-Jewish. What in the, the, the people them who attacking Jeremy Corbyn? But when it comes on to issues to do with us as African people, you don't hear him coming out and supporting African people. This guy is Sadi Khan. No? Yeah. The picture support the, 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 the Jews and who, who telling lies about Jeremy Corbyn, who has fought racism in every way, mm. in all his political life, about his anti Jewish. Yeah, yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. Really, have to hold them people. Last man, yes, it's a, it's a serious situation, you know. All right, and we have been, uh, and we have been toots from meetings coming to perform at Alexandra Palace this Saturday. Okay, I, yeah, I know yes, the pan yes, tour, yes. I know the pan tour. Yes, yes, he's on tour, so Saturday. He's at Alexandra Palace over in North London, so looking forward to see. Oh, you're going, you're going there? Um, the you're group. going? I want, I, yeah, I want, I want, I want to do that. No? Yeah, you might say Ellie's there. You might say Ellie's there. You might say Ellie's there then. Please. Ellie's Kelly, yes. Okay, seen, seen. Yeah, yeah. So, Dougie Bryan has rhythm guitarist, Jackie Jackson, the great bass player. And, 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 and thing, you know, so that should really be good. And yeah, man, definitely, man. To say Liz Kelly, as you said, that she is, is supposed to be dear. And what I think, I love our Rita Franklin, from the denounce that guy who never did a eulogy, the, the part of the guy, J Jasper Williams Jr., yeah, 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 and yeah, about yeah. black lives do not matter. Oh, you it was everything that Arita Franklin did not stand for. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. The father, and not the family, and the, mim, and the people in the audience were saying, celebration were saying, talk about Arita, talk about yeah, Arita. Yeah. But what I noticed with them is that them go up there and using people's funeral to them own selfish motives. Yeah. And, 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 and supporting this racist thing about about that, about black lives do not matter. We all know that the reason why the saying black lives matter comes because of the racism we by the African people's The like, police killing them in America. Are regarded as nothing. Yeah, the police killing them. Mm. Yeah. Personally, that like, is nothing. And, and, this, and this uncle Tom come with him foolishness. And you notice them do allow Louis Farrakhan to talk at all. Mm. Yeah, well, that's the things. And, 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 and of course, you have the anti, anti ones them who say Farrakhan should not have been up there. Who should not have been up there is Bill Clinton. Remember, he's seen three strikes and you're out. That has destroyed a lot of African families. 
Yes, and money. 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 Yes, Keep up the good work and happy birthday to my father, whose birthday was the 4th of September, too. All Best right, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Here, <coughs> yes, President uh, Mota. Blessed man. How are you doing, sir? Good day, man. All right. Uh, good, good. Good to hear you, sir, sir, after a while. Um, thanks for this. Casey, man, back in the day, you used to talk that out on some serious way, sir. Yeah. That's Mr. Mitu, Jackie Mitu. Jackie Mitu, Mitu man, may I tell you? I'm from St. Mary, Port Maria. Mm. Yeah, man. And it's from them times, the murder times, yeah. that album came out. And we used to play it around the place of the people. Jackie Mitu in London. Um, yeah, man, I remember um, a, 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 a big, big set from St. Anne, Jack Ruby, High Power. Yes. I was to drop it on that set one night, my brethren. Hey. Yeah, man. Because that man had some... Which, which one of the tune them? Which one of them? Oh, oh that's um, Jack Ruby? No, which one of the tune them is your drop? Your drop on the... Uh, um, drum song. Oh, the drum song. I'm going to play that drum song. Drum song. Yeah, drum song. Yeah, big man, song. drum song. I'm drop on them. Big on song, them, big song, big because, song. Because, listen, man, them man, they had some serious dub plate in them, man. Yeah. Serious dub plate, my brethren. Yeah, me know and Jack Ruby had a, some... a, a serious DJ with him at the time. Mm. But we as, as as youngsters never care. We just do our thing. Yeah. I'm going to drop it for the people, my brethren. Yeah. And when I hear you play it a while ago, I was driving from Harbour View. Oh, and yeah. I must touch base with you, my brethren. Yeah. So thanks, thanks, thanks. Ten million, sir. Yeah, yeah man. Give thanks, man. Yeah, I man. And, 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 and I'm going to that, that youth, man, that um, um, turned in for you more time when you're not um in the island, sir. I said, um, a big, 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 oh, oh, you mean Roger Asphalt, you. Roger, concrete when asphalt, you tell him, yeah. Him, 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 do a very creditable job, sir. Yeah, yeah, man, give thanks. Yes, man. All right, sir. Other people are, I, I just, I just enjoy the music. I'll give other people a chance to talk to this. All right. This program is big. I also remember that man that said, Muta Baruka, you remember that, that, um, advert he did for you? Oh, you mean, what, um, what was his name again, sir? You mean Baga? Baga, man. Baga, yeah. bro. Baga, bro. Oh. Yeah. yeah, man. The drum star, uh, uh, man. Baga, bro. Um, Shocking me too. Remind yeah. me that man, my brethren. All right. Because it's when that. you started this thing and with that man voice and the thing, man, it livened up the place, man. All right, sir. We're going to play Jackie Mitu better. again. Jackie Mitu again. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Uh, oh, oh, the, oh, the staff. Education last about the Rastayu. What? Rastayu. Them, well, them say them Rastayu. Them have carried them last come to school. Which one of the school them? Uh, one school. Which? I know every school well, say that. Why say every school? No, I'm not every school I say that. My 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 grandson no goes school man. No, no, no. When I say the school, I'm supposed to say that no at all. No, what but I'm saying, so I fight it. No, the one who did say the other day, the father fight it and win it, you know. And the government but declares that no, you should be barred from school because of that. Okay. Yeah, the government said no, you should be barred from school because of them here. Okay. Yeah. I want to ask you, you know, let me start some, some last statement alongside... Marcus Gravity is maintained at the school, no black supremacy, you know. Can I, can I see the youth, them now? This thing already in paper, how, 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 how would it come from? No, them have them new things that got go with the youth, them. New way for, for grade the youth, them. Where the said colonial system? All of them the system are colonial. Where the said, said colonial teach system? Yeah. 
the rest of the world, the world, the world, we don't need, we need some, some change to call for the youth, them, we just know about colonial system, we don't know about them black supremacy self, that means, uh, it, uh, them have a bold said you know. Mm. So the whole, the, the whole political system are going with the youth, them right now. Look more up here, the only native teachment said, we say, look, look more, when, when you see the whole part killing and the whole part thing where you, them are going with, I told them to know properly know themselves, you know. Them have no substantial black supremacy in you know, them for, for, for keep them and know of them own personal self, you know. That's because you know, for, for know yourself, when you know yourself, you know. You know certain things in yourself, but we have tolerance where you know have a food for the certain things. But when you them ill, when them ill and you have to view them, them kind of way that you them still, them have to go out of the way, you know, because that system set, are set up on them, you know. So you need, you need you them to have more, more self-start, more self-development. When, when, when it's a bullet in start, you know, the police, the soldiers, them, them can't stop it, you know, car, car, them are set the thing, you know. So you need to realize that. So you them need more, more self-development, more, more, more self-program, where them say more, 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 more blackness, that them can see themselves as, 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 as person who, who can, can tolerate certain things and stand up to certain things and, and can resist the temptation of the system where we are come up on, on them, you know. Yeah. You, yeah, man. You, the man, you, themselves. Too much, too much to hear any of the things that go on upon them, man. Crime and violence and them something there. They were, what, what, what do you think? Yes, brethren, give thanks. Yeah, man, we have to see that, we have to see that right, you know, man. We have to, we have to sit up from some, some, some school and all this. Some we we can't can have that to go on with you with you them you know. What kind of work they I do? Them them to put a law and rush for you them in high school and a man like you and and. and what kind of work they I do? What kind of work they I do? What kind of work I do? Yeah. I I plant things in the motor by Oh, oh yeah, I'm a farm. Yeah. Okay. And friendly, yeah, I'm I'm on I'm on doing some music and thing too, you know. Oh, you were, okay. I go, go up by you blind one, one at a time, you know. Go, go, go do some music with, 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 with Miguel and um, the man there, you know. Which man there? Up, up at the AC, up at the AC, man. Up at the theater, the man up there. The theater, up at the, 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 the university? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we have to move now. All uh, right. Listen, man. Just get strong. Yes, I want you to come up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We love, we love the, 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 the thing we want to mark us the other thing, man. This little thing, man. Come on, now. Yeah. I really appreciate love them things. Let's see you my own. Yeah. All right, sir. Bless. All right. Yes. You know, say, brother. A special little announcement here, yeah. you know, we mentioned that, for those of you who know, Lana, Lana set up a school over the years, we educate whole heap of youth. We go to a university and then place upon our own to do it one away. We can testify to that from the time she start until now, we can testify to that, Lana. Well, our house, our the house which we accommodate the school, and which part he used to live burned down to the ground. And we decided to so we'll help her still. And I remember Red Bridge name, Mac Raskava called me and asked me about um, if there is a, when I'm calling him again, <laughs> an account. Well, we was down at China today, downtown there, where the Naya Bingy drum them a play. And she gave me an account. It's First National Caribbean. Sorry, First Caribbean International. And the account number is 10021919498. I 
Okay. We want to give the number again. It's one zero zero two one nine one nine four eight. As First Caribbean International Bank. Now, the most amazing thing we should tell I is this. That when I did mention about the burning down of the house, a relative of I were in a Cuba. Listen to this. Rachel Simpson. We want to heal up. Sorry, Raquel Simpson. We listen in a Cuba. And when she hear it mentioned, she called her next relative in America, America, Canada. And we met the relative today. Them fly come long at the same time. This is when we said it transmit go to Cuba, transmit itself go forward again to our next country, and right away the relative Come along here. So I uh, heal up the relatives who listen to this relative in Cuba who listen to the continent. <laughs> I we was told to heal her up, really. Raquel Simpson, who want to heal her up. You the one who sent the message that right now, you know, Lana feeling good because she was dancing the whole night. Sunday night. Don't find the period. So I uh, give this account again. For those of you who want to help, because it's really a sister way. Trust me, educate enough youth over the years. You know, me remember the, the years, how much years ago, when it just started, where we did, we did, we did carry lunch, go down there for all of the youth, them every day. I, 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 every day, I don't remember if I every day, I, mean, I think at twice a week. She can't tell me still, I don't remember, but. We used to carry lunch, go down there, down a water house. And we sit there, a whole heap of them youth there. It's now big people. Big people. So I want to give you the account again. It's 91, sorry. It's number 100219194. The account number at first Caribbean International Bank. One zero zero two one nine one nine four eight. And we we'll still again want to heal up Raquel Simpson. As we said today we went downtown, you know it's not a place where you like see a groundation in the middle of the day happen. But Urchina Smith and the Bingy Stra was having a wonderful time chanting down there in the yard, Bingy Stra movement. Every first Wednesday from 12 o'clock to 6 p.m. And this happened right down in the, the street, they so saw near Grace Kennedy. Building, I think it's between um, oh, George's Lane, yeah, George's Lane and East Street. When you come along East Street, when you come along East Street, after you pass the, the Institute, just as you reach Arbor Street, it's up on your left. There's an open plot there. And China and the drummers chant there every first Wednesday. From 12 o'clock until 6 p.m., drum chanting, very unique, you know, the day, <laughs> a serious thing. Yes, right in the heart of the town, believe you me, the heart of the town, I get busy, and that we notice, you know, Kingston, yeah, Kingston, between Harbour Street and Gorong is like so oh. With all the artistic expressions and music and food and everything. I wish I said Dongtown Kingston. We well, specified Dongtown Kingston. More was never enough. I'm 86 years old. And sadly, I'm basically sitting on my deathbed. I have millions of dollars in the bank. 
but I can buy health to save my life now. I have family and millions of fans around the world, but I'm all alone now. Not even my children, all along estranged wife or brother stand around my deathbed. I live my life wrong, and I don't want this to happen to you. If you listen and take evasive action, I can help you change your future. The following few moments may very well change your life. And I wish someone had told me this when I was your age. Money is not evil by itself. It's just paper with perceived value to obtain other things we value in other ways. If not money, what is evil, you may ask? Evil is the unquenchable, obsessive, and moral-bending desire for more. Evil is a bottomless, soulless, and obsessive, compulsive pursuit of some pot of gold at the end of some rainbow which doesn't exist. Evil is having a price tag for your heart and soul in exchange for financial success at any cost. Evil is trying to buy happiness again and again until all of those fake, short-lived mirages of emotions are gone. Imagine having it all, only to lose it all. You are now broke. All the money is gone. What you have. The only solution to your madness and happiness was acquiring more. Now you have no more means to acquire fake happiness. No more means to acquire more. So, who are you now? Where are all the people now who you thought were your friends while the money was flowing in? You might have lost your family, friends, and mostly everyone in the world thinks you're a self-centered, egotistical asshole. Why? Because of your endless pursuit for more, clouded your mind and diverted you from your true purpose in life. Does this hit an emotional chord in you? Did it depress or sadden you? I almost said good, but I will say this only because I want you to change. I'm not saying you can't be financially successful. I'm saying have a greater purpose in life, well beyond the pursuit of financial success. Your soul is screaming for you to answer your true calling. You can change today if you redefine what success is to you. You can transform your damaged relationships and build new ones. You can forgive yourself and others who've hurt you. You can become a leader by mentoring with others who you aspire to be like. You can rebalance your priorities in life.